Anyways, Dan's up. He says, why is PowerSuggest Pro your favorite keyword tool? Because it's simple, Dan. Uh, it's a very, very simple tool, and that's what I like about it. I like easy. Can you explain a little bit about how you use it to get the most out of it? I've heard Bradley say he loves it, but does anyone else use it? Do you use it in conjunction with any workflows or other tools? Thanks. Um, okay, so, yeah, the process that I've always kind of, well, not always, but for the last several years now, I always do a very simple process for keyword research, and it starts with Google Trends. I go to Google Trends and search, um, and I, you know, I adjust the settings in Google Trends depending on what kind of data it returns. So, for example, uh, by default, it's usually I think the last twelve months. Let's just go take a look real quick. <clears throat> Sorry, I think that by default it's the previous twelve months. So let's just use Tree Service as an example, guys, since we were just talking about that. Yeah. Okay. So twelve months. And obviously, it's set based upon my IP location for United States. Uh, it's, it'll be different for people in other countries. But what I'll do is, um, what I like about trends is I can go in and determine based upon geography. So, for example, we have, you know, United States was in here. Let's see, U.S. Uh, but if I wanted to, like, go specifically to Virginia, I could just start typing in Virginia, and I could say, okay, look, I want to look at what are the top search phrases or search activity that are related to this seed term of tree service in Virginia over the past 12 months. And sometimes you won't end up with a lot of results because we've narrowed the geography and we only have a short time frame. We're looking at the past 12 months. So in that case, for example, this is showing rise. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on trends because that wasn't your question, but I just want to give you guys a quick overview so that you understand kind of my thought process or workflow on how I do keyword research. So if we come over and take a look at top, rising is showing significant increase in search interest for that particular phrase within recent history. I don't know what recent history is. I don't know what the uh, sp specific parameters are for that. Like, I don't know if it was the last 30 days or last 90 days or what. I just know that it means in the recent history, it's had a significant increase in search interest. Okay. But top is showing the keywords that are historically related to the seed term. Okay, so for the past 12 months, in this case, these are the keywords that are most closely related to the seed term of tree service in Virginia. Does that make sense? So these are the search habits of people in Virginia that are that are looking for tree service related keywords, and these are the keywords that come up typically. Okay, you'll see a lot of brand terms in here. If I would have done something like tree removal, in fact, you can compare terms, by the way. If I do something like tree removal, you'll see less brand terms there. Right, so if we come down and say, look at top, or excuse me, top, you'll see now, look, there's not a whole lot of data here, but see, I was just talking about this earlier, guys, tree removal and a tree removal service, right? So uh, those are similar type keywords. So you see that there's not a whole lot showing up here. So what I could do is I could extend my time frame. So if I go from past 12 months to let's say past five years, now all of a sudden, we've got a lot more data, right? So now we can come back over here and look at top, and you'll see that now there's actually eight keywords which still isn't a whole lot considering that's going back five years, right? And this one's showing 10 keywords and that's, hold on, that's rising. If we go to top, it's showing 11 keywords, okay? So the last thing that you could do is back it all the way out to all time, 2004 when they started Google Trends to present and then you'll have even more data. So if we come back and take a look at this again and now remember this is still, okay, so not much more, just one more, but you can see that this is still uh, only Virginia. And so what happens, and by the way, guys, I was targeting the entire state. If I wanted to get hyper-local, I could. Like, for example, if I wanted to target, and, and there, you can see it here, Charlottesville. Like, if I wanted to tar target Charlottesville, specifically, I could. But what I found is when you narrow geographic targeting that much, you end up with a lot less results. So I always recommend, um, first, I, I usually don't go, I, I, I try to keep it to past five years is my time frame. And I usually go to state level right off the bat because I found that city levels, now obviously if you're in a big metropolitan city like New York City, you should have a lot of data. But uh, you know, for me, uh, you know, I usually start at a state level. Tree services don't have a whole lot of keywords associated with that industry. So anyways, I'll go to Virginia. But if you, if you end up finding out by increasing the time frame and that you're still not getting the amount of keywords that you're, you know, you're not getting a lot of good results back from this tool, then I would recommend that you start broadening your, your area too, right? And you could even go to the United States level, right? Because there's still going to be similar search queries no matter where you are in the United States. If you see now, there's a full 25 uh, queries there, right? 
So I would probably, that's past five years if I wanted to. And guys, that's why I said I play around with these. Even when I'm doing keyword research, I play around with these just to see how things changed based upon time and geography. Okay. So that's, that's step one. I don't want to spend too much more time on this, but step two is I always like to take these keywords and then, so by the way, I just copy the keywords or write, put them in a text pad, a text file or a spreadsheet. Typically I use spreadsheets and those become my seed terms that then I use to go search using Power Suggest Pro. Power Suggest Pro, one of my favorite tools of all time. I don't know what happened there, but who cares? Let me move this off to the side, guys. Stand by. So Power Suggest Pro should be opening up here in a second. <clears throat> And let's just say we wanted to, let's go back to Virginia. It's a good question though. All right, so we'll just use tree removal service. So in this case, now this this type of a keyword is is because it's local, it's a local intent keyword, you're gonna see that all it's gonna return is um, a whole bunch of um, localized type search queries. But if I uh, if I said tree removal service, you know, VA or something like that, and I click search, you're going to see it's going to start pulling back all, all these returns now for tree removal service. These are coming out of auto suggest. So these are Google suggested phrases for tree removal service A, tree removal service B, or, or tree, tree removal service VA. And there's it, essentially like a wild card in there. And that's why, because it's, it's basically saying return all the suggested phrases that are associated with tree removal service in Virginia. And if you take a look at that, you see that very quickly it spit out all these different keywords that are showing up in search, uh, Google suggest that are localized or local search intent keywords, right? So now I know that these are all keywords that are very popular. These are traffic producing keywords. Why are they traffic producing keywords? Because they're in Google suggest. Think about that guys. When you go to Google and you start to search on a desktop, which by the way, um, you know, 70, about 70% of all traffic now comes from, or all search traffic originates on mobile devices, guys. So desktop search is becoming a dinosaur. But regardless, let's just say I say tree uh, removal service. And I, if I could just spell for a minute. Here's all these suggested phrases. Okay, you see that? By the way, near me keywords, guys, those are huge. They're absolutely huge right now because of what I just said. 70% of all mobile searches are originating on mobile devices. Near me keywords pop up in suggest uh, instantly. They're almost the first thing that come up and suggest. Well, remember on a mobile device, guys, when you start to use Google, you all know what happens on a, on a smartphone, which is what 99% of the population has now, right? When you start to do a search on a mobile device, half the screen is taken up by the keyboard. And the other half the screen, as soon as you start typing the search query in, Google suggest takes up the other half of the screen and suggests the, the, the search queries, right? Recommended search queries. And because it's on a mobile device, it's so much easier to tap a closely related recommended search query than it is to finish typing out your search query, right? On that little shitty keyboard. And so my point is there's a ton of traffic to be had from mobile devices because of suggest and all of the phrases that pop up in Google's, uh, excuse me, Power Suggest Pro are phrases directly pulled from Google Auto Suggest. So they are traffic producing keywords. Don't worry about whether the Google Keyword AdWord Planner or Longtail Pro or any of those other stupid keyword tools out there that have a million bells and whistles that give you all these competitive metrics. Don't worry about whether they say there's search volume or not, because if it shows up and suggest there's search volume, period, end of story, <laughs> period. And, and remember the, the, the keyword tools rely on the Google keyword planner for, for search volume metrics, search volume metrics from the Google keyword planner are AdWords or Google ads keywords. They're for pay per click. They're not the same as SEO based keywords guys. So even though the search, the Google keyword planner may show if you spit out all the keywords that you wanted from, from here, let's say that you wanted all these I, 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 again, just for example's sake, if you spit all these out and you entered them into the Google Keyword Planner to look at search volume data, many of these keywords are going to say no search volume at all. But that's bullshit because if they're in suggest, you will get traffic on them, especially for mobile devices, period. 
So that's why I love this tool, guys, because again, look, it's real simple. It doesn't give me a bunch of competitive, it doesn't give me any competitive metrics. I don't need all that stuff. All I need to know is which keywords produce traffic and these keywords produce traffic. And it does it really quickly. There's no learning curve with this tool at all, guys. I mean, you can play around with some of the settings and stuff. You'll get different results, whether you use suffix A to Z or suffix AA to ZZ, or if you do recursive, yes or no. There's different search engines that will scrape. All of these produce suggested results. So you can select, if you're doing YouTube marketing, you can, if you're specifically targeting Yahoo or Bing, I don't know who does that, but if you did, you, you could find additional keywords from them. There's Amazon, eBay, there's all kinds of stuff, right? I typically just use it for Google and YouTube. But it's a great tool, guys. And for years now, we this I, I stopped paying for all those really there there were keyword tools that we've used at Semantic Mastery that literally cost us eight hundred dollars a month. No shit, eight hundred dollars a month to use a keyword tool. And I stopped using those tools for this one. This I think fifty. I think it's seventy seven dollars one time fee. I think we have a link somewhere that allows you to get it for fifty seven dollars. If you want to drop that on the page somewhere, Adam or anybody. Anyways. Sorry I went so long on these two questions, but they were two really good questions that I really wanted to get out <clears throat> to you guys. So this one here, like I said, guys, it's a simple tool. I use all that. Finally, what I will do, though, I just even though I mentioned the Keyword Planner is an AdWords tool, I do still like sometimes to try to determine if there are search volume uh, data for some of the keywords, even though I know there's traffic on them, whether the Keyword Planner or, or says it or not. Why do I want to know? If, because if there's search volume data in the keyword planner, it's likely that people are bidding on those keywords. So by taking my list that I accumulate or that I genu generate from, from my, my research, from first using trends, second using Power Suggest Pro, then I can go enter my finalized list of keywords into the Google Keyword Planner and look at search volume data so that I can determine which keywords are like that people are bidding on uh, for, for AdWords or, or Google Ads now. Uh, because now I know that those are the ones that are likely the most profitable keywords, right? Because if people are bidding on them, it must be money there. Uh, or else if people aren't bidding on them, it's typically because there's not they don't produce any revenue. That makes sense. Okay. Also, you can find some additional keyword suggested ideas uh, through through the keyword planner after you've done this initial research. It's a great question. <laughs> Too bad we're right. not giving shit away. Go ahead. What what I have for this is is that when you start broader, right, you can get just so many keyword ideas from Power Suggest Pro but by, by digging into each category. If, if you want to consider it a category, you won't get categories, but you'll know. If, if you've done keyword research long enough, you'll know what's a category keyword what, and, and what's a supporting keyword. And so you can just dig and dig and dig. And what I've found is, is that you come up with just thousands of keyword ideas and then from those you can cherry pick the the long tails so that you can start ranking right away and you can start produ uh, uh, producing traffic to the website and it's likely to become people who convert i mean it, it, it it's really really powerful to use that way it's one of the ways that we use it in our keyword research i mean we we dig down in, into whatever people give us as the niche and use power suggest pro and then yeah. just keep digging and digging and digging and digging sometimes you end up with thousands and thousands of keywords man yeah and that's i i, I want to that's why i just started to demonstrate this as you were talking because like for example i just put how to cut down a tree right guys i don't even have recursive on recursive means after it searches and it pulls back all of the results it goes back and then searches each one of the results again plus the suffix a to z if you have suffix added uh, so it's like like what uh, Marco just said. Sometimes it you, this thing will spit out three thousand keywords. It's ridiculous. And the thing is, especially when you have recursive on, which I don't, because it, it could it could run for like you know several minutes if that's the case. Um, but when I have recursive on, you'll see like for example, how does a uh, like how much does it cost to just cut down a tree? How much does it cost to cut down a queen palm tree? Look how specific some of these search phrases are coming out, right? And now if I have a tree service site and I'm in an area that has uh, palm trees, then it's likely that there's search queries. Remember, this this is a suggested search queries, guys. Uh, how much does it cost to cut down a queen palm tree? That means when somebody starts to type in queen palm tree or cut down a pre queen palm tree, in fact, let's just go take a look at it. We'll say cut down a 
queen palm tree, cutting down a queen, queen uh, you know, cutting down a queen palm tree, all that. You can see those type of keywords come up and suggest, and before somebody even finishes typing it out, they're going to say, oh, well, there you go. That's close enough, right? And so that's what I'm saying. There's, there's traffic on those keywords, and look at some of how long those are. And then if I have recursive on, some of them come back even longer. It's crazy. I have seen like full-on sentences as search suggested search queries that have come back in here. And those are absolutely great topics, guys, or, or uh, keywords, search queries, right, to, to target with blog posts or Q&A posts and things like that because there's so few people targeting such long tail stuff like this. You can start to generate a lot of traffic over time by just building up. I mean, very, very simple stuff, guys, like how much does it cost to cut down a queen palm tree? Put that question on a, on a blog post and answer it with a little bit of schema markup. And next thing you know, you end up in position zero or in one of these one of these areas right here, right? So, and you get a shit ton of traffic from that, okay? So anyways, it's a great tool, guys. I absolutely love it. As Marco said, like I, I, I've i learned over the uh, last couple of years that I don't, <clears throat> I used to always just go straight to SEO stuff and I would do a ton of keyword research and I would generate literally thousands of keywords for a project before I would, and, and, and then I would just start doing SEO. Now I've really gotten to the point where I, I always start with Google ads so that I can really pinpoint where the money keywords are, the lead generating keywords are. And then I start basing my SEO campaign, right? I, I develop my SEO campaign based around the keywords that I know produce traffic that converts because of AdWords or Google ads, I should say now. And then I'll use this type of stuff now for content marketing to start building up the SEO presence and start generating traffic from the longer tail stuff that will trickle in little bits and pieces at a time. So you start to accumulate little traffic streams from these longer tail keywords. But the, the you know the bulk of your traffic is gonna come from just a handful of keywords and it always does, at least in local marketing it does. The 80-20 principle absolutely applies. And if anybody, any of you guys do AdWords or Google Ads now, you know that to be a hundred percent true. Sometimes it's 80, 20 or 20, you know, 80% of your results come from 20% of your keywords. Sometimes it's 90, 10, sometimes it's 95, five. And uh, again, if any of you, uh, you guys that are doing any Google ads, you know that to be true. And so why spend a shit ton of time on a lot of long tail keywords when the bulk, it, there's a reason to do that, right? Building up silo structure and all of that so that you can rank organically for the short tail keywords. You need to have the long tail keywords. But what I'm talking about is like, uh, initially starting off target, you know, getting your silo structure in place, using the keywords that as the top of silo that, you know, produce traffic and results, which is what you can determine with AdWords rather quickly, which is a couple, you know, a few hundred dollars in ad spend. You can determine that. And then you can develop your SEO campaign based around those results or that data. Right. And you can develop a much stronger SEO campaign right off the bat. You can map it all out ahead of time. It'll make your job so much easier as an SEO. And by the way, if you want to learn how to really stack keywords and everything properly, SEO Bootcamp by Jeffrey Smith. Uh, by the way, he's going to be a guest speaker at POFU Live. So another reason to come join us.